Welcome to another show, Two Dudes Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Kearney, with my co-host, Kevin Manning. Kevin, what's good, man? Man, you know, I'm here trying to survive, trying to make it happen in this, uh, this white man's world. That's how I feel today. Feeling real pockish today. Okay, you feeling thug life, huh? Nah, just feeling just, you know, the the setbacks and the pitfalls for the black man trying to survive with the white man. I feel more intellectual pock versus a uh, violent rage pock. Oh, okay. All right. So you, you, you feeling more, you know, philosopher, free thinker. Yeah. All right. As long as you ain't going postal up in there, you know, we don't need that. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to avoid it at all costs. Let's uh, turn a negative into a positive and have a little bit of fun today. Uh, All right. Before we get started, um, let everybody know that uh, we're going to have some special guests coming up here shortly. Uh, members of uh, uh, Black Men Run, a running group, and uh, they are actually more than a running group. Uh, they represent a lot of positivity in the community, so that's going to be coming up for you. Um, Kevin doesn't know this yet, but uh, I'm bringing back one gotta go. I got two of them for him. I'm sure he's seen one because I tagged him on it on Facebook, but I just want to get his reaction. And we got a few things going on in the sports world today, even though sports still sucks. First things first though, you know, just like usual, we want to start off uh, the podcast and let y'all know that, uh, you can email us if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. The Two Dudes Podcast at yahoo.com. And that's T H E, the number two dudes podcast at yahoo.com. Uh, first things first, Kev, we got to get you a weekly update, you know, the job situation. And uh, in addition to that, how's that workout thing going? I know it's it's been on less than a week now, still less than a week since I. Uh, set you up with that. I just want to see how you like it. How's it going? And what is what it feels like so far? Um, job search is pure hell. Um, doing applications, you know, waiting to hear some, waiting on that little bird to come give me, you know, a happy message. Uh, fortunately, got, uh, got denied three gigs in the past two days. Stung a little bit, trying to stay focused. That's what got me on my pocket mindset because I'm just like, I know I'm qualified. I know I'm beyond qualified. I know I may be just barely a little bit underqualified. Somebody got to roll the dice at some point. But, you know, it's just you, you get so angered, it's hard to see that window of opportunity coming because you, you, you're putting your all into it. And you're just like, what else I got to do without having, you know, sell my motherfucking soul for a gig? So, you know, just trying to stay positive. Waiting on it to come when it's supposed to come, you know. Thankful for my kids because, you know, they kind of keep me, you know, to where I'm not truly stressing. Thankful for the unemployment. Finally got that. Thank you, Jesus. So that's helping out to where bills is getting paid. So I got my cable and cell phone a little bit longer. You know, so I'm just trying to make the best of a, a bad situation. Hey, that's all we can do. Stay strong. Um, God, my week has been much of the same. Picked up where I left off last week. Uh, a lot of y'all know I, I can't run. The magic date will be sometime in September, I hope. A lot of people think October. I'm not I'm not going out like that. Your old ass don't need to run in September. I done told you. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. The rehab is going good. Uh, I've been working out and trying to, you know, get back in the weight room and the first couple of days was touch and go because after that first night because you know day one with squats if you ain't squatted in several months uh, it's hard rolling out of bed the next day but I made it happen and now it feels good again and for the first time in a long time and for me this is saying something I look forward to leg day yes as a runner for a long time I couldn't stand leg day but I'm kind of embracing it, and I'm going to make it happen. Um, also, uh, 
for everybody that knows that I'm, you know, working on a, a independent film. Uh, the movie's coming along. I'm in the pre-production phase. And this week, I'm scouting a few locations and trying to get some stuff together for special effects. I did have one heartbreaking moment. I wanted to do a lot of practical stuff because it just looks better to me on film, especially since I know that I'm shooting on digital here. But um, because of budget constraints, i.e. I'm poor, um, a lot of it's going to have to be done digitally, which means it's not going to look as good to me. I know some people don't care about that, but as an artist, sometimes you fall into uh, being a perfectionist. And you have a vision and you have it in your head and you want it to go a certain way and it doesn't. And at first I felt bad about it, but then I started thinking about, you know, everything that I've learned, uh, not just through film school or um, just things that I've learned through life. It's not always going to go the way you want it to go. So sometimes you have to adapt and that's the true test right there. So I'm getting it going. It's coming along. All right. Well, you need it going. That's all that really matters. Yeah, that's true. But it, it's going to be a slow process, too. I figured that I'd have it done in maybe four to six weeks. It's looking like it might go about 10 weeks for this whole project to get done. And the reason why I'm tacking, on, I'm tacking on extra weeks because since I'm going to have to do a lot of digital effects – and I'm not, shall we say, a master at that kind of thing. I'm either going to have to outsource or do it myself. And either way, it, it's going to be a chore. So I'm giving myself a little extra time. I'm, I'm kind of padding it. The good thing about it is I'm, I'm ahead of the game as far as Hollywood is concerned. A lot of them movies haven't even started shooting yet. So, you know, I'm on track. I'm going to do my thing. We got a segment coming up that Kevin thought of called Dumbass of the Week. So, Kev, who's your Dumbass of the Week this week? All right. So, since we record on Wednesdays, we miss some things, but it'll be brought up when we record. We feel that it's funny when it comes to this. And I came up with this. Was it Saturday when I called you? Yes, sir. Okay, does everybody know about the, the Will and August? I mean, Jay and August and Will being hurt, all that other BS or whatever. Not about to backtrack on that. But what I found funny is, you know, everyone ran with the word entanglement. I've used it a couple of times on some jokes as work. It's, it's golden. August Alcin decided he needed to get in on it, and he comes up with a, I think it's like a four minute song called Entanglement. Hands down, one of the worst songs I've heard of 2020. If it wasn't for Rick Ross in the song, I wouldn't have gave it half a star. Rick Ross makes and steals this song. August Alcina just needs to go back to that drug-infested hole he was in and just shut the fuck up and never be heard of again because August, no one cares. Although I will admit, your, your new CD, I give it a three out of five. It's solid. It's not bad. But at the end of the day, no one cares. So your first single is you love this shit. We don't love that shit no more. So go back to the whole of New Orleans that you came from. You know, wobbly wobbly, drop it like it's hot, however they say it. And just uh get you some beignets, baby, and get the fuck out of the world that we have to watch you in. So I ain't gotta see your punk ass no more. Cause that was just that song was so horrible. You can laugh at him and you be like, oh, I see why Jada was trying to save him. The boy lost. So it just, he had lost calls. He had lost in every aspect. You only imagine she went back to Will. Think about it. Will versus you. That's like Brock Lesnar versus Dane DeVito. Who do you think go win if a female staring at them? Brock go win every time. So get your midget ass up out of here. And again, go get back on the drugs you was on so you can make yourself known. Like you little millennials want to do, little bitches, and just be gone, be done. No, no more. Goodbye, August. That's all hate, I got. Hate to be August right now. Um, to August, hate to be August. Hey, speaking of music, I put out a poll. 
uh, on Facebook and Instagram and got some results I want to share with you. I want your thoughts on it. Um, before I give you the results, I'm going to ask you what you think. And my question was, when it comes to movies, music, and fashion, who had the better decade? The 70s, the 80s, the 90s, or the 2000s? Uh, I'm not going to give my results yet, but I'm going to tell you, I obviously went with the 80s. I know you're getting ready to crack a joke, but hands no, down. I'm not, I'm not the 80s was cool, but the thing was, soundtracks didn't get life until the 90s. That's when you start seeing more black movies, and that's where everybody named Mama wanted to have that lead single. I disagree. Off that movie. I disagree. There were plenty of black movies in the seventies and eighties. The seventies were the black exploitation era, and those movies was horrible. No one played that music any attention. You take away Car Wash, what else you got? Superfly. Okay, you got Car Wash Shaft. and Superfly. I can keep what else? You, I didn't hear you. I say your mouth move. I didn't hear you. After Superfly, I said Shaft. Okay, so those are, those are three juggernauts. I'm not going to deny that. But that's pretty much where it stops at. I mean, nothing else. But you go to the 90s, you got soundtracks that people still to this day will pull out and listen to. But that's also, obscure. oh, y'all don't forgot how to have them soundtracks. That's skewed, though, because you know what they are because you grew up with them. People that are like, 20 years older than you, they grew up with something else. So, they would going... stop. Sorry, my dog was home. My other dog got to oh. stop this gay shit. Take your ass to your bed. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. No, I don't want to hear that. That growing up, this, that, and the third. I don't, don't want to hear that. Music is music. It's with movies. There, there's not one soundtrack in the 70s or 80s that's better. Then Men's in Society, Above the Rim, House Party 2, Set It Off. Hell, I even take it one further and um uh, and say not there's not one better than Boys in the Hood. It's just there's those movies and soundtracks all just through the roof. Nutty Professor. Right, but remember um, this, hell, this even, poll this poll is for music in general, it. not yeah. soundtracks. So we're talking about music, movies, and fashion. I know. Oh well, that still goes to the nineties. Still goes to the nineties. There's no way in hell the nineties had better music, movies, or fashion than the eighties. Yes, the eighties was creative. The nineties was just was the nineties was the precursor of remakes, remixes, and just straight do overs. If it wasn't for the nineties starting all that shit. We wouldn't have so many films today that constantly rehash stuff that we already had. I disagree. The 90s brought everything, gave relevance to things, made it, you know, about something. The 80s, y'all still doing all these motherfucking make the wans and pouring these spoof ass movies. No, talking about whole case and shit. No, the 90s. 90s made everything popping. The 90s, Right now, it's trying to be redone by these damn kids. You realize I saw every time yesterday for British Knights. Really? British Knights are coming back? Next LA gear go come back. Sad moment. I had a pair, pair of LA gear. But that stuff came out in the 80s? It wasn't big till the 90s. It came out in the 80s, but it, it was wasn't a tech. I'll put you like this. Here, here's the thing. And I think this will this will settle it all. You're right. The 80s was about as big as a fat chick at a buffet. It was big. But the thing is, the 90s was Aretha Franklin big. I'm talking Detroit, singing during the playoffs, Thanksgiving missing too big. Hold on. Are we talking Aretha Cadillac. Franklin like 10 years ago? Or are we talking Aretha Franklin 20 years ago? I'm talking that fat bitch the past decade plus, however you want to look at it. Big than a motherfucker, when you like, damn, how she move around with all that weight? To where, what the, the change between the 80s and 90s, 80s was you had music, you had clothing, but it stayed at a pause. 90s, more TV, cable, things like that. 
But what happened? Endorsements. That's what made the 90s bigger because that's when we started putting people as endorsements to stuff. It's like I was watching um, that I Am Athlete podcast, Reggie Wayne. Yeah, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Box. And he said, man, I still got a pair of S. Dot Carters and G units I never wore in a box that they sent to me because I was with Reebok. Difference for the 90s and to where the 2000s and beyond will never be as big. 90s open introduced the era of consistent endorsements to where you wore everything that you signed with head to toe. Nowadays, you mix and stuff or whatever. Like Dwayne Wade, he got his shoe deal, but yet he wears some other shoes too. That didn't happen in the 90s. If you was with, was it Lai Ching, whoever is the company he with, you only wore that. 90s put everything out there because people had endorsement deals. You hear a St. Oscar commercial to this day. You think of Snoop, Q, I uh, think what Dre had one, Ice-T. You think of West Coast Rivals when you hear St. Ives. They the one that one had the commercials. They endorsed it. British Knights. I think MC Cameron, when he had his pair of British Knights or whatever. 90s introduced endorsement. That's why 90s be bigger because something was tagged to something. They just, they didn't let it just float out there solo. Like just throw it out there and see if it stick. Oh, no, let me go ahead and get him. We ain't going to pay him shit because it's new, and we're going to let him make us all this money, and we'll give him a little bit on the back end. That's why in today's time, when Reggie Wayne said he was playing, he was getting over $70,000 worth of apparel from Reebok for every year he was playing. 70 fucking thousand? You know in the 90s, when they started doing apparel, and he started seeing like Emmett Smith with Reebok and stuff, I bet he wasn't getting $70,000 70, worth of apparel. But as the years grow on, they knew more and more, they started sending more. And you still got people to get things late in years to still get shoes from Jordan. Get big ass uh, refrigerator boxes full of shoes. Man, I wish I could get an endorsement deal. Grant, I don't need a bunch of size 14 and 15. I'll be like, hey, can I get some of the 12? They're like, man, you don't wear a 12. Hey, I just want to try if I can fit it this time. You know, so it's just, I get what you're saying, but. What makes 90s top dog is because of endorsements. If you take endorsements out, then it's 80s all day. Well, we can agree to disagree, but the public agrees with me. Here, here's what we got. The 70s got 20% of the vote. The 80s got 50% of the vote. The 90s got 30% of the vote. And those poor little 2000s got nothing. Because they are the 2000s, the 2000s is that bastard stepchild <laughs> off of uh, what we doing, the plain and simple. The two, if the 80s and 90s didn't exist, the 2000s would be lost. That's true. I mean, I mean, this is what shows you just how big the 90s are. I saw yesterday, they're re-releasing Ken Griffey's shoe. That was a sweet ass shoe. Well, Nike's been re-releasing everything lately. But here's the thing, though. You're re-releasing it, and it's already sold out. You ain't even put it on the shelf yet. You ain't even said how much. Here's it's the already thing, sold out. Here's the thing, though. With that shoe, you know what you're going to get because you've seen it before. Most people that are getting it have worn it before. They can't top forward. People ain't That's got true. their hands on the Bronco yet, and they done sold out. You told me they sold out twice. Yeah, wait on the next uh, go around order wise. And what it is, a lot of people are buying the special edition um, of, I think, the two door. The, they buying their first special edition of the two door to where they sold thirty eight hundred in a matter of like blinks of an eye. And they said they're going to do another round in the, in the next uh, version that they're going to have is going to come out. They're anticipating the same thing. They're anticipating not keeping any on the lot until damn near this time next year. But you know, at the same time, you know, people, they'll want to put their hundred down. But when it comes time to finance, they going to go like finances look different and they're going to be able to get it. So it's like, as of right now, hey, it sounds good. But when it's all said and done, I expect something to fall apart on their face. I agree. 
I mean, hell, it is a sweet. And that's vibe. where I'm gonna go get that altered one that somebody couldn't afford and get it for half the price because when they altered it, they can't sell it for the, re the regular price. Now I will say this: if you do plan on getting one and you plan on altering altering it, make sure that you get the base model, the real cheap one, because so many manufacturers right now are going to come out with aftermarket stuff for it. You'll you'll be safe. Oh, you already know. I'm just waiting to see what uh what manufacturer or what company about to come out with a knockoff version of the Bronco because you know somebody about to try to dip into that pool. <laughs> Jeep. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Well, you know they already had to uh, mock them in the commercial. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely a good time to be a Ford fan. It is. It is. Now, the one thing, though, that I hope does not happen, I don't want to see within the first year or two of production of this a vehicle any kind of recalls on it. Or any major problems. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to happen because they put too much work in it. This has been in the works for a good amount of time to where, hell, there's several different versions that ain't got to do with what actually came out. So I don't, I don't see that happening. No, let's hope not. Real quick, I want to talk about the NFL because um, – the league decided today that they would let um, fans come to games, but you have to wear a mask. I'm good with that. If I had to wear a full body suit to get in a game, I'd be good with that. You good with that? I've already told you. I'll get tickets. I'm there. I don't care if they tell me I got to be there in a jock strap and a white beater just to make sure I ain't got nothing to know me. My fat ass is over there, and y'all going to have to deal with it. I'm there watching, cheering my squad on. I refuse not to be there. Speaking Especially if we play uh, a horrible team in the AFC West, I really got to be there. What day? Lead the Chargers out of it. Yeah, Chargers, Broncos. That's enough. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey. I'm I'm switching gears. I'm staying in the NFL, but I'm talking about a retired player. Because you and me both done saw this video now, and so is half of America. Uh, for a thousand bucks, which is pocket change to both of them, T.O. raced Cheetah, Tyreek Hill. And um, I got to be honest with you. I didn't expect Terrell Owens to keep up like he did. Granted, he lost. You saw that coming. but So you didn't see both races then, did you? Yeah, they did the uh, full one, then they did the 40. Yeah, well, you know, the full one, T.O. won that, but at the same time, he was given a seven-yard head start. Which means oh. he didn't win. Now, he won. He, uh, he showed his skill. He showed that speed. And if Tyreek had another five yards to go, he would have caught him. He'd have caught him with no problem. All right, so we got some guests in the house today, uh, members of Black Men Run, uh, more than just a local running community. They're national. And I got three out of the four. We was expecting a fourth. We got uh, three out of four on with us today. I got Brian Jones, Brian Jones, uh, and Lawrence Witt. Now, the reason why I said Brian twice is because we got Brian with the I, and Brian with the Y. So everybody that's uh, watching this on YouTube tomorrow, they gonna know the difference. But everybody that's listening to the podcast, that way you don't think I'm going crazy. But anyway, I'd like to welcome them onto the show. <laughs> Fellas, how y'all doing? Really good. Doing good. Yeah, doing, doing okay, good. man. Happy to be here. Good, and I appreciate it. Yes, sir, doing you know. good. So uh, <clears throat> first thing I want to talk to, Captain, Brian, tell me. Um, a little bit about Black Men Run so that the people out there know. When was it founded? When was the Kansas City chapter founded? And uh, what's the uh, main goal of the organization? Okay. Well, Black Men Run as a national organization was founded in 2013 by uh, Ed Walton and uh, Jason Russell. It's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. 
I believe at that first group run, it was like maybe seven members there. And now uh, it's like seven, eight years later, we have uh, over 50 chapters, including London and Paris. Um, how we got white men running come to Kansas City, uh, about a, a year into it, um, you know, with all the, the run applications that we have now, I was on Nike Plus, and this, this guy, I forget his name now, but he sent me a friend request, and his uh, profile picture was uh, the Black Man Run logo. So when I saw that, I kind of Googled him and looked into him and saw there was a presence on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and um, did some research on him and saw what they uh, what they represented. Um, you know, the Healthy Brotherhood, trying to get guys to kind of come out and you know, build some kind of camaraderie and also focusing on their health and motivating, pushing each other and building that strong brotherly bond and uh, fellowship. And um, I reached out to, to the guys in Atlanta, Ed and uh, Jason, I wrote a, wrote a, put out an application, wrote an essay, did an over-the-phone interview, telling them why I thought I'd be a good fit to have here to, here in Kansas City. And uh, they um, uh, allowed us in. And since then, in 2014, September of 2014, we've been here in Kansas City and growing strong, you know, constantly. That's great. See, Kevin, you need you need discipline like that. We need to get you out there running. So we got to get him on here. Not that at all. <laughs> all right, y'all heard it here first, so you know, let's work on that. So uh, yeah, I want each one of y'all to tell me, you know, when y'all started and how long you've been with Black Men Run. I'll go next. Um, I've probably been running for about. 10 years, um, the last 10 years, uh, started back up. Because, of course, I ran in high school and uh, a little bit of college and, and military. Oh, I remember you ran in high school. <laughs> oh, yeah, we go back. That's right, Richard. Yeah. Uh, hold, on, hold, on. hold on. I bet this Brian ran with a curl, didn't he? He had a curl yes, back. Yes, sir. Then. That's why I ain't got no hair now. <laughs> All gone. The curly kid took it out, man. Hey, we, we had <laughs> hair back then because I had that Carl Lewis high top. Fame. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Brian could tell you what, what he was when you on the relay team that dropped the baton and still won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Picked it up, kept on going, man. Recovered. Recovered ground. You know, I was we were speed demons back then. Kev, you don't know nothing about that. That's Ray South right there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we was running like we was possessed, boy. Back in the day. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I started back up probably 10 years ago. And um, I've known Brian Jones uh, for a lot longer than, you know, the, the past 10 years. I, I grew up in a, in a church uh, in Kansas City, uh, Good Samaritan Baptist Church, uh, where I first met Brian and his family and his brother, uh, Ron and Michelle and all and Darla. But uh, yeah, we go all the way back and, um, I was out running on my own, and I swear I thought of this whole black man run before I was uh, introduced um, one year by Brian. I was out in Lee Summit just running the streets and uh, didn't see very many of us uh, color, men of color uh, running. And it could have been just because of the area that I was in, was not heavily populated with, with black men and families, but I just thought about it and I, I joined up for a Hospital Hill run, and Brian, I'm, I'm pretty sure you remember this, and uh, we just kind of ran into each other out there. Yeah. He was already representing Black Men Run, and I knew nothing about it. And, um, you know, I, I was doing my thing, and you know how a marathon is. You, you run at your own pace and speed and, you know, endurance level or whatever. And the main thing here is that these Black men encourage you to finish every step of the way. And that's good. And not you're only in the full on, marathon? Uh, I'm not at that level like that with some of these cats, and uh, I'm scared to try a full. <laughs> Richard, did you try one this year? Uh, no, I did not. not yet. The furthest, the furthest I ran was last year uh, in the Kansas City, uh, in the Kansas City uh, Marathon. I ran the half. Yeah. Okay. okay. That was, was that enough was for first. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I got some more stories I can talk, but I'm not, hopefully Mike comes in on this one, but I'd love to share that story. But I ran a few halves, um, ran some 5Ks, um, and I've, I've run some short distances just on my own. So um, 
but seeing Brian out there at that first Hospital Hill run and him uh, saying he wanted to, you know, pretty much just reunite and, and hook up and, and gave me a call. And he, he stood on his word, gave me a call, introduced me, um, asked me to join. And I've been with Black Men Run for probably, I don't know, eight, nine years now. And uh, the rest of these guys can tell you the rest. So I'll, I'll keep mine a little short. All right, Lawrence, <laughs> what about you? Um, well, I was never really a, a distance runner. Um, I always ran sprints and triple jump and long jump and stuff like that. I ran my first half in uh, 2013 in Guam on a dare. And so um, just kind of choked that out. And then I kind of been running. Hold up, hold since. up. You ran where? I, I ran it uh, on Guam. You uh, was in Guam. That was the dare right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but other than that, you know, I'd only been running just to keep up with my PT test. And then, um, so when I left there, went to uh, went to Arizona, went to Florida, and all of that. I've been running, and uh, and Brian with a Y is my cousin. And throughout that, from the time that I left Guam and and, and Florida and went on to Turkey, um, I had been watching him on Facebook. Uh, sending pictures with uh, Black Man Run, and it was kind of pushing me, huh. and so I just I was I, I was pushing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think it was the other way around, brother? <laughs> it, it was it was just cool to see to see those guys running, and because all this time I'd been running by myself, and you know only running when I you know running in a group when I had to, and then when I was because of what I did in the military, my position, you know, I would try to get my folks to come out and run and motivate them to stay in shape and things like that. Sometimes they would come, sometimes they didn't, but I always felt like uh, I was the one trying to motivate them, but uh, BMR was motivating me. So um, all through Turkey, um, I've been posting and everything, cause, um, and that was pretty cool, because when I, when I requested to join, I was not even in the country. And, and the brothers right. welcomed me in. <laughs> and and when I showed up to the first run, it was amazing. It felt like I had always been there. Yeah. And 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 that was the, that was a cool thing about it is that you know just to be around good people doing the right things because you know we all got our lives, we all got got ups and downs and all of that stuff. But it was really really good to have like minded people because we talk about it all the time, um, or we've talked about it several times that. Out of all the, the events that I've been to, the 5Ks, the 10Ks, the half marathons and stuff, um, at running events, I have honestly not met a negative person. Not met a single negative person. The only thing that was sparse was people that looked like me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the only thing that was sparse. And so um, hooking up with these guys and then running and, and then like, like my cousin said there, you know, all I had to do was finish. I went, and then nobody ever left me. You know, some people always waited for me, came back and got me, and just just finished. And so this is this has been a good thing for me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, just a little bit more about my uh, my background. Kind of the same. And I since high school I've been running. I didn't necessarily do the cross country, but I ran ran track. And after high school, I had a, a my best friend played football in uh, college. So every summer. Every Saturday during the summers, we used to go to the park and kind of run around and help him get in shape for the uh, his upcoming season. And then after college, and he went on to the military, and I kind of stayed in Kansas City and you know started my family and everything. I continued to run. And um, the thing about it is, man, I didn't like really didn't enjoy running by myself. And that was one of the reasons why I even reached out to Black Men Run in Atlanta. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to have some guys to kind of run with me. And the best part I think about Black Man Run is all the different fitness levels and guys that come out. You know, everybody has their own personal goals and their own personal um, um, things that they're trying to accomplish, right? And there's always somebody there to push them. Uh, like Lauren said about guys being there at the finish line to, to cheer them on, that's the, the biggest thing people will say, say about us, like in the, in the city even, is that we're always, you know, conjugated at the end of the finish line waiting for our, our last guy to – to cross the line and sometimes we even go back with guys and you know whatever your fitness level is whatever your your goal is is somebody there with you to kind of support you along the way and to uh, Lawrence's point about just having his presence there on on uh, Facebook that's another way that we kind of connect with each other you know you post your fitness journey whatever 
you're working towards whatever your, your struggle is. And those guys to kind of give you some advice or keep you motivated or, or just uh, to share it or go along for the ride with you. And when you get there, man, it's, it's good to celebrate with some brothers that, that know your struggle and know what you've been through know, and knows what it took for you to get there. So I think that's my, my best, my favorite part about being a part of Black Man Run. Yeah, and um, I will say this. All, everybody in the group is some good people, all of y'all. I know one particular story that I'm going to share because a lot of y'all may or may not know that you know, I try to be healthy. I really do. But I've got one vice. Brian with the eye knows what it is. Orange, <laughs> orange, orange vanilla. Coke. So, <laughs> what was it? <clears throat> the uh, year Arrowhead. At the uh, Arrowhead run. Yeah. You know, right after I crossed the finish line, I'm, I, I gave it <laughs> everything I had. I'm, I'm looking a little ragged because, you know, I just finished the race. Here comes Brian with a can of orange vanilla coke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up to celebrate, man? <laughs> and it didn't last long, too. <laughs> I, think, I think you had another race that morning. I think that might have been right before uh, the uh, Kansas City Half Marathon, too. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know it was another race. Maybe it was Hospital Hill. But I know it was another it, race that followed that. It was Hospital yeah, Hill. Yeah. Double dipping, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because th that crazy schedule, because uh, that was the year that they rescheduled the um, yep. Arrowhead run. They can't, you know, them Chiefs can't get nothing right. Kevin, Kevin, get them. Earlier this year, they did. Wow. Earlier this year, they did. All right. Hey, I will give them that. I will give them that. Yeah. As much as I talk about them, I I'll give them all the props in the world. But right now, this ain't about the Kansas City Chiefs. This is about them. <laughs> You know, we got an extraordinary group of gentlemen of all ages and skill sets. And, you know, I love every one of y'all. And, you know, I want y'all to keep doing you know, it. Kind of, this is kind of expiring in some regards because, you know, a lot of blacks are known for track and things of that nature. I never would have thought there would be a black man's club of running. That just seemed like the, the furthest thing like we got all these motorcycle Corvette clubs and we go. <laughs> you see brothers on horses and race. Right. I ain't ready to see running. These, these brothers choose to run. <laughs> and hey, all the things know, they but can you do. Know, <laughs> but you know, I, I kind of feel the same way though. You know, that was something that you, that you never saw. And, um, you know, as I, as I started getting older, I started realizing that I had to make some changes as far as uh, my health is concerned. You know, um, when I was young in the service, I used to power lift, I used to compete. And I can't do that anymore. You know, the joints don't last like that anymore. The, the, yeah. the diet is not as controlled as it was anymore. And and the metabolism is just not there. And and I used to tell my, my airmen all the time is that I'm not I never I don't run to to um, to try to win or anything like that. I'm running and not be an old broke down dude. <laughs> you know, that's and and, and I want to live a little bit. I want to, I, I want to try to live a little bit longer to irritate my kids and my grandkids. You know, <laughs> I, you, you can't control any of that stuff. But I tell you what, I'm not going to go quietly. I, I'd rather die on the on the road than than die on my couch with a bag of chips. You know, right. and, 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 and that's what that's what the goal is. You running to run, not running to win. My what? mindset is y'all trying to win races, set records, and y'all trying hey, to make no mistake ball. about it. We want to get better. Yeah, you know, that's part of the process. But but the right. thing is, but the thing is, your time, my my time is my time. You know, it might take me, you know, it might take me an hour and, and twenty minutes to finish a half marathon. I don't care that it's going to, going to take Mike Thomas there an hour and 55 minutes or an hour. Right. Yeah. I will say that this. That don't matter to me. I'm I will say to be, this. I feel cheated. Time. I feel cheated this year because I turned 50 in April. That put me in a different age bracket. So I should be out <laughs> yeah. there winning some trophies this year. Yeah, yeah age group trophies. Yes, yeah, sir. Not so only have we screwed that up with COVID-19, but now I can't. I can't even get out there and do nothing because, you know, I'm on one leg. What's going on in this world? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, I, I look at it like this, man. Just beat yesterday. So, 
or even be last year if you possibly can. But I haven't been able to do that, so I'm still working on it. You know, but right. yeah, be yesterday. Just improve your times. Yeah. You know? Hey, hey, my 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 plan is always my plan is always show up. That the hard part is showing up. <laughs> the rest yeah, of it is all relative. Once you show up, you'll finish. Whether you got to run, walk, or crawl, you're gonna finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you said, man, it's always gonna be somebody there to push you. I've done like four full marathons in in uh, over the last few years, and I know that it's not my race. I mean, I struggle through it but I always finish, right? And it's also the process you go through, the training, the work you put in, working towards this goal for, for, for months and trying to get there. And definitely you want to get a, get a, get across that finish line and say that you, you finished. But like I said, everybody has their own goal. So if it's your goal to, to just finish or finish in a certain time or, or um, whatever it may be. I mean, you said, you said little, little goals for yourself along the way. Like I said, everybody's on different fitness levels and you find a way to challenge yourself to get across, to finish that, to finish that race. So it's not necessarily about coming in first place, but about, you know, doing whatever, accomplish whatever goal that you have in mind. Everybody at that race, whether it's 5,000 or 10,000 people, they all got their own, everybody has their own individual goal and they're all working for it, working towards right, it. Let me ask you guys this question. Because I know, see, you guys said y'all been running, Richard, you too. Y'all been running for years now, whatever. Is there one race that you mark on your calendar that you be salivating like, yeah, I'm going to kill that one? I know yes, I got sir. that one. That's my yeah. race right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely, definitely the trolley run, man. This, it's a four miler, it's, it's a slight Ooh. downhill the whole way. And like I, I used to average like maybe a nine minute pace, but on that one, for some reason, I get that 740 mark every, every, every time I do it. So it's just one of those that, that you, you know that because of the course is so, so uh, runner friendly that I know I, I look forward to it every year. Can y'all guys hear me yet? We can hear hey, you. Hold up. Okay. I'm sorry, I was late, gentlemen. Now, <laughs> <laughs> nah, you good, Mike? I just like you told me for his background. Huh? I see that background. He was getting his trophies in the background, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's Mike. That's Mike Thomas for you right there. There you go. He, he was setting that up. That's why he was late. But I'm not shooting him. I'm not shooting him. He was prepping the room. I'm the most modest of everybody out of all of us. I'm sorry, gentlemen. <laughs> Just like he said, that trolley run is so cool. Uh, I've done it for like five years before I even started this group. Uh, I've done that for five years. And just like he says, it's all downhill. You get a burst of speed and you just go. Uh, I think, like he said, you know, your normal average pace is something. It's usually always a good, maybe like 30, 30 seconds fast. It's just, it's just a beast of a race. I love it. I love everything about that race. Just the very beginning, when you get there, they put you on a bus and take you to the top of the on Hill, and you stand around and you're waiting. And you just got those nerves. You're just ready to go. So yeah, that's like real quick. Um, yes. I asked everybody else in the group um, when they started, how they got involved. So you know, I want your story on how you got into uh, Black Men Run too. Um, I started Black Men Run in 2017. Um, I've told the story before, and the guys get tired of hearing me but it is what it is um I was running on my own kind of doing my own thing and uh, I got tired of people asking me Mike when are you going to run a marathon when are you going to run a marathon uh and if you're a runner everybody says hey did you run a marathon this weekend and you're like no I ran a 5k and no I ran a 10k so they always come with the same thing and then you get to that point you get tired of hearing people say when are you going to run a marathon when are you going to do it so I decided I'm going to go ahead and run a marathon in 2017. Um, marathons is hard work. It's a lot of training. That was one thing that I knew I couldn't do on my own. Uh, so I started looking around for uh, local running groups. I saw a black man run. I'm like, yeah, that's definitely me. So I reached out to Brian and uh, came out and met him at the park one day. We ran got to run and talk and stuff and had a good conversation. I felt a good vibe and it's been on and popping since then, man. I'm, I'm Mr. Consistent. I usually, I met that park on, I will, excuse me, I used to be at Mill Creek Park every Saturday morning. Uh, I love it. 
that's 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 my thing, man. And then, like I said, 2017 was the thing. I was just going, going, going. Uh, if you look back on like Facebook posts and stuff from back then, every week, or excuse me, it was literally about every day, maybe I missed one or two days a week that I'm posting something, man, and I'm just putting up numbers. I loved it. I just fell in love with running. And Brian was a big cause of that, and this group was a huge cause of that, just because uh, I love the story about the whole group and everything. I love it. So you hear that, Brian? When we all old and got knee replacements, it's your <laughs> <laughs> and, and we make so, the memories, though. Together, we're going to make the memories. This is true. <laughs> I'm, I'm hey. going to all my medals on the wall, too, so I can be like Mike. <laughs> I want to be like Mike too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike, Mike brought up an interesting point there that I didn't mention earlier. So uh, again, with Bite Man Run, what we try to do, of course, we have that Facebook presence where it's a private group where guys kind of can post their uh, their fitness journey. But on a weekly basis, mainly Saturday mornings, we try to meet up together at the parks. For the for the last um, about five years or so, we were meeting up in Mill Creek Park on the plaza. But here this year, uh, since the, the COVID stuff, we end up going down to um, 18th and Vine area just because we didn't want to you know, be a part of that area because it's because of all the history that's involved with it. And it's also, there's plenty of ways to, or areas or, that we can run in that, in that area. But so weekly we meet up and some guys come out and they'll walk with us or they'll, they'll run. We got guys that are faster to go longer. But like I said, everybody comes out and they run at their own distance and their own pace. And um, we're out there together every, on a weekly basis. And also, I want to point out that we don't just run. You know, the more you get involved in running and training for races, you, you start um, discovering cross training. So, for as that, like cycling, riding bikes, or doing something like boxing or boot camp. I know Mike Mike does a boot camp quite quite often, and even yoga. Believe it or not, I, I discovered yoga throughout my uh, my running journey. And first, I kind of used to turn my nose up at it, but now it's something I actually enjoy, and it helps yeah. you to. To, um, to have longevity, so you don't have to have to worry about the knee replacements once you uh, <laughs> once you get older. So we try to we try to our goal is to get people moving to um, to make sure we create this healthy brotherhood and that people are taking their health seriously. And uh, whatever that may be, you know, somebody here that supports you and be there with you. And like I said, the more the more we do and the more we do together, the, the better our bond is. And like I said, you know, your brothers got your back, whatever your goal is when you're pushing towards it. So, Brian, for those uh, Saturday uh, runs, on average, how many people do you usually have out there? Um, my, my main man right there, Mike Thomas, I, I guarantee he'll be out there every every Saturday, but everything else kind of fluctuates. Like I said, we got many different uh, fit, fitness levels, right? Some guys are, are, are dead serious about running and preparing for the next race, and other guys are still kind of hesitant kind of get out there. So, um here lately, our our, um, our participation has been growing. I think at the most we had about maybe twelve guys at, at one group run, but on a on a regular basis, it's uh, me and Mike for sure, and there's always a, a few more guys that kind of straggle along. But you know, every week that opportunity is provided for them, whether it's raining or snowing or whatever. Uh, we're out there, so you don't have to worry about having the excuse that I ain't gonna go because nobody's gonna be there because it's guaranteed that me and Mike uh, will be out there. That's so good. good. And how many people are in the KC chapter? Uh, on a, we have a, a strong presence on Facebook. I think it's about, a, um, I'm not sure, I'm guessing here, maybe 150 guys on, a, on our Facebook page. But I believe we have um, maybe 35 active members. Those are the guys that actually been out to the group runs and on race day, they meet up with us and they're waiting at the finish line for that last guy to, to cross with us. And they're, they're posting on a, on a regular basis. So we have some guys, just like I thought Lawrence was in the beginning, just kind of kind of watching, trying to, you know, Feeding off our our uh, our motivation, you know what I mean. They see us posting on the on a daily basis in the races we do and the the meetups that we do in there, whether they're participating or not, they're um they're motivated by it. But for us, uh, the guys that actually met and shook hands with, we got a strong uh, maybe thirty five to forty guys that uh that are active members. Cool. So um, real quick. I'm going back to when you first were talking about uh, the uh, group as a national whole. I didn't know that we had a London chapter. Yeah, we do. London and Paris, matter, matter of fact. Hey, um, did you hear that, Kevin? If the British and the French can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, join us, Kevin. Come on. I hear what you're saying. I hear you. Hey, um, 
before we close, you know, I just want to say that, you know, y'all, like I said, extraordinary group of gentlemen. And I really, really appreciate being a part of this. And, you know, I wanted to desperately get y'all on and make sure that the uh, people know about Black Men Run. And hopefully it continues to expand and grow even further. Um, before we close, though, I just want to go all the way around with all y'all. And, you know, if y'all got anything y'all want to part with, you know, go ahead and say it. You on camera, you on tape. Is is open for you any way you want to do it? Who uh, start? I, just, I just like to say that I came late. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, uh, this group is is a, is everything to me. I love these brothers like they my actual brothers. Uh, I I go to bat for them any way, any shape I can. Uh, Richard, when you put this out there, I was like, yeah, I sh I'm definitely going to be here and I'm definitely going to do this. So I feel upset because I got here late, but still. Uh, hey, it's all good. Is, but Brian is my partner, man, dude. We've gone from guys just running together to talking about any and everything. We, we chat, we talk about a little bit of everything together. And like I said, all these guys. Other Brian, I got vivid memories of just running, meeting, making him hit that Kansas City. Uh, Lawrence will grab me in a heartbeat, be like, "Hey, Mike, let's do this race. Let's do this race. Let's do this race." With all this peer pressure behind his voice, but <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> it's all love. I love these guys, man. I I wouldn't rather I wouldn't want to be with uh, associated with another group of men. Ever. So these are my people, and that's all I got to say, man. I love them. Go ahead, cuz. I was hey, looking um, for some. <laughs> no, I just want to say um, that it, it is it's truly a good group. And um, and if anybody out there is interested in running um, or, or just being out there and, and getting a little bit in a better shape or increasing your fitness level or just looking for a different outlet, um, definitely a good group. Um, and it's, it's good to be around grown men with grown men minds. Um, and that is, um, that's good. You know, we need that. And all of us are not being out there running the streets and out there acting crazy and out there, um, you know, up to no good. You know, you can't be, you know, if, you, if you're going to get it in on, on Friday night, you're going to struggle Saturday morning on that round. If you show up Saturday morning, that's all good. <laughs> that's, that's all good. But it, but it gives you a little bit of temperance and, uh, uh, and then it lets you, it reminds you that you're not doing this by yourself and that, you know, um, that, that you do have people supporting you and, and motivating you and, and trying to get you on a track to do better for yourself. Not necessarily to, to, to win first place in the A's division, though you want to, uh, but the, the, the mindset of just showing up and finishing. And then the rest of it is, you know, then take it on to the house. <laughs> so that's all. I'll, I'll just start by saying I love these brothers, too. I got vivid memories and stories that I could tell about each one of them. You know, like, say, me and Richard could go back to high school, and, you know, we, was, we were sprinters. And uh, me and Brian would go back to the church, you know, uh, and ran into each other out on the street running. And uh, that's how I met Mike and Black Men Run. And uh, he's been real supportive and, and pushed me and encouraged me all the way. And then my cousin Lawrence, he's... He's always done it. He don't even know it. So, you know, he's always encouraged me. I've always looked up to him, you know. Uh, but uh, I just want to read this, and then I'll let somebody else have it. Um, it says, Black men run. Black men write. Black men fight with all your might. Black men run. Black men run. Black men write with all in sight. Black men run. Black men run. Black men write about the light we must ignite. Black men run, black men run. We have just begun. What I write till we have won. Black men fight with all your might till we have won. Black men run, black men run. Yes, sir. Good. That's good. Hey, hey. You run a mile real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I said, they, they motivate you, Kev. Um, as a matter of fact, y'all hearing it today, I will be back for the KC Marathon. The rehab oh, is going well. I okay. will be back. That's great, right. man. It's good to hear that, man. We'll, we'll be here.
I mean, I feel hey. like I could go out and run right now, but I'll be sore as hell. Day, so. I'm, I'm gonna do what the doctor said. I'm, I'm gonna take it slow. Oh, take it slow, man. Cause we want you forever. We don't want you just for one race. So. Yeah, cause it's hard to run with a cane. <laughs> That's right. That's why you start walking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I, I will say this too, Brian. I've learned the power of the bike. Oh yeah. I've been using that bike, man. And you know, I'll come in in the mornings um, and I'll go to the weight room. You know, I might, you know, on the change group on Facebook post my uh, weight workout, but part of my warm up is, is getting on that bike. So, you know, keeping, keeping my creaky old knees loosened up and taking yeah. care of business there. And I've also learned the value of stretching. Like you said, Brian, we go way back to the race out days. Yeah. We didn't stretch then. We thought no. we were stretching, but we just <laughs> got out there and ran like it was nothing. Got up the next day, did it again. Can't yeah. do that no more. Nope, no sir. But you know the, how to stretch now. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to stretch just to stretch now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but listen, thank y'all very much for coming on. We appreciate y'all being on this show. Uh, it means a lot to me. And and since me and Kevin have been doing this, I just thought of it. Y'all are our very first guest ever on the podcast. Right on. So that, that's, that, that's very fitting. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate the invite, man. Uh, no problem. One thing I do want to say, I know you brothers run. Glad it ain't from the police or anything. The first I was like, Richard, they running with TVs? What are they running with? You know, I had that, I'm going to give you such a moment in my head. But – you guys can come back for whatever. The men and Richard talk about any and everything. So if there's something that's on your mind you want to talk about and ain't running, just holler at Richard. Holler, I don't care. You know, we, we leave the door open for anybody to come on and talk about whatever. You ain't got, just got to come on for what you what you came on for. You can come on for anything. We just like to have fun, talk trash, then we put it out there for the world to hear. <laughs> that's what's up. Topic is off limits. Mm. That's what's up. Hey, that's hey, good Richard. brothers, man. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Rich, before, we, before we get out of here, man, I just want to let people know how they can reach us, man. Yes, like I said, we have that. that we have that strong uh, uh, Facebook presence. Just type in Black Man Run Kansas City to hit our chapter. And, of course, Black Man Run has a national page also. And also on Instagram, uh, Black Man Run Kansas City, I think our our um, our code is uh, B-M-R-U-N-K-C. And it's our public page. You can see what we're doing, whatever we got going on on, on a weekly basis. But, again, just type in Black Man Run Kansas City on Facebook or you know, look us up on IG, and uh, like I said, we'll be here to motivate you, to support you, whatever your your goal may be. Oh, uh, man, put that head down. Put that head down. Don't make me go get my teeth done. <laughs> hey, it's, better than, it's better than that Raider Nation I'm looking at, though. I know that. Hey, hey. hey remember, Paul, I control Paul. the edit button. <laughs> Did you hear something? I didn't hear anything. Did you hear something? All I heard was wah, 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 wah. Right. <laughs> you know what? I can't stand none of y'all now. Oh, if you can't stand us, go sit on that toilet bowl stadium y'all built. <laughs> hey, don't, don't talk about that state of art stadium. You still mad because y'all didn't vote right to get the damn Super Bowl. All you needed was a retractable roof. That's That's that girl here. We ain't no punks. We don't run. <laughs> Playing the elements. Playing the elements. Exactly. Yeah. We don't run from the weather. <laughs> right. Like you we don't run from the weather either. Y'all went from more sun to heat. Just like right. girls. Just basically call y'all the rare. It's not hot enough in LA. It's not hot enough in Oakland. Let's go to the desert. <laughs> you know, we got to make it hot. <laughs> they gonna hide the Gatorade from other teams so they can win. <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that mess. Not trying to hear it. I'm going to let it go. Uh, let me go to my tea stuff. That's my little tea stuff. <laughs> <thing, man. laughs> oh, yes, sir. That's what's up right there. Can you read that? I can <laughs> appreciate that, Mike. I can appreciate that. All right. Yep. Like I said, y'all wouldn't made it. Y'all didn't want to made it like that. I didn't want to do that on y'all. <laughs> Ooh, I, y'all just right. to the off. That's all I was Who trying to do. He put his place. I'm just a lowly old host trying to uh, put out a podcast. <laughs> then wow. you know Kevin had to pick out the damn red mic. <laughs> what, what, 
can I say? Got to keep it real. Got to keep it. Got to coordinate. Got to connect. You know. <laughs> Kevin, I, I can't stand you. All uh, right, if y'all didn't know, it just came out as I'm looking over this stuff. If you want to go to a game this season, you got to wear a mask. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. So, I ain't going to no game in Vegas because I want to pass out. So, I can go to games in Kansas City with no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, boy, shut up. Hey, <laughs> it'd be all right in KC with it being as cold as it is. Hey, it'd be just hey. fine. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, you in Vegas, you definitely going to suffer for asphyxiation. Uh, right. Now, now it, that, that stadium's black. It's got a nice little window tint on there. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody trying to sit in no giant tinted window. So, you know, I mean, at least I ain't, you know. Gentlemen. Uh, it's good to see everybody, man. I got to keep it rolling. Yeah. Good to see you all. Uh, uh, on, appreciate on the invite. Note. Congratulations. Right, on a different note, congratulations to my boy, Bryant Jones, uh, the other Bryant. Uh, he just got a new job today. He got yeah, appreciate it, bro. He Thank got you. the job. Doug, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. What's up, man? I am so happy for you, dog. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats, Cap. All right. All right, bro. Uh, again, man, thanks. If you guys don't have anything else, I'm, uh, I'm going to get up off of here. No, we good. Yeah, we good. Thank you yeah, for the opportunity, man. Hey, I appreciate y'all being on. Yeah, thanks, like I said, thanks for the invite, bro. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Y'all have a good one. All right. Too, bro. All right. Have a good night, gentlemen. Take it easy. <clears throat> Kevin. Yes, sir. I'm back to you. Okay. Bro, I want to go over two more things real quick before we close out All right, the show. That's cool. I am athlete. You got me hooked. Yeah, it, it is good. It is. Man, and, and, and the difference between them and us, because, you know, we'll talk about it in a heartbeat, too. Yeah. But They've been there, They've done it, and yeah. I am like, wow. The the stuff they say. I want to focus particularly on the first one that you showed me on YouTube, the one with Chad Johnson on there. Yeah, Chad was raw. Yeah, he was. What, Chad, what, do, you, what he, uh, do you think about the show? The way I see it, is a good show, good mix. Considering his two wide receivers on there, Brandon Marshall is showing that he's really not the head case you thought he was. He's actually articulate. And Fred Taylor, it's just, you know, when Jacksonville became a franchise, they only pushed, they only pushed two, two players in the beginning, Marty Brunel and Bosley, uh, Bosley by the, the linemen. Then they push the receivers. They never pushed Fred Taylor, even though he was always top five running back his whole career there. Yeah. So now you're getting to notice who he is and that he's a good old Florida boy. But at the same time, Fred Taylor's funny as hell. Yeah, he also he, strikes me as somebody who has a chip on his shoulder. I, I wouldn't say a chip on his shoulder, but I'll say, as you know, they say now, he lets you know he about that action. If you come at him sideways, he gonna give you what you want. Because remember, yeah. his opening, his picture, his video, he's like this. He letting you know he about that action. Yeah, him and Channing Crowder. Yeah. He a fool. He is a nigga for real. When he said how he was hustling them Air Force Ones, because I don't know if you saw that one. I did not. It's uh, the one about... Um, it's talking about endorsements and stuff. It's talking about being trendy or whatever. And so that's why I say Reggie Wayne was like, he getting 70K in, indoor, in apparel every year from Reebok. Said Christmas was easy for him. Said he still got shoes to this day that he ain't wore. Fred Taylor was like, 
he was getting shoes just endless. Said he got to wear, he would get like the Nike, the Jordan ones, the Air Force ones. If he got a crease in the toe part, he only wear for, he only wear the shoe for two days. He always have ninety pair or whatever shoe he was rocking. Mm-hmm. That way, in two days, he can go to the next pair. Damn, ninety pair of shoes just because you don't want two crease marks. But if you get two crease marks, the shoe's over with. It's done. Shannon Crowder said when he was playing, I realize he it's been ten years since he played. I remember he played with Miami. Said when he played, he was like, I wasn't big as y'all. My contract was good, but they wasn't like y'all contract. He said, Nike, I get Air Force Runs. Air Force Ones, $90 a shoe. He was like, or 94 a box or whatever. He was like, you know, he got a deal through Nike because he was signed with Nike. Said he would get the box, give it to say about 15 in the box, give it to his brother in law. His brother in law, he said, this one Nelly put out Air Force Ones. And you couldn't find them anywhere. His brother-in-law would take the box and sell them two fifty a pop. Did this for months when the Air Force Ones were high. Wow! How hood is that? While you're in the league, I ain't mad at him. That's illegal as hell, though. They said, "Like, man, you talking about tax evasion right now?" And he was like, "Well, it was back then." <laughs> but well, I mean, statute of the limitations then you know, ran out. Yeah, it's a good show, a good dynamic. I like it. They, um, I'll admit, I skipped over the episodes with when Black Lives Matter first started. I really didn't want to hear all that, but all the others I've watched, like when they talk about the last dance, when they talk about, when they talk about just being the goat and stuff like that, I've listened to them talk about all that. Yeah, I it's heard all like, that. uh, like when Reggie Wayne was talking about when, uh, when Peyton came back, he was like, man, he said Peyton called and was like, go find the field for us to throw. He yeah, said, I saw Peyton, that one. He's like, you know, Peyton and Carl Tate to do something. And when he was just like, how he was amazed how Peyton was back, and I was like, damn, so he must have really thought Peyton was done, done. So it's like, you know, hearing those type of stories, it's amazement to me because we, well, we ain't privy to nothing like that. That's one thing I will say about social media. We still some things in the sports world we're never privy to, and that was one of them. Yeah, I learned a lot from Reggie as far as when he was talking about his practice schedule. Man! And he was talking about – If you started at 530 and you got to drive 45 minutes away, that means you getting up like 330 in the morning. Yeah. And and then – Here comes Brandon Marshall at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You want to go work out. Man, you don't take your ass home. <laughs> well, now that, that one with Chad was crazy. When uh, Channing was like, "Man, you got some pretty teeth," that's why I was like, "This dude's crazy. This dude is crazy." If he gonna say you got, because he did that to try to get Chad off guard. Because you can tell in some regards, Chad was guarded because he was like, "I ain't saying nothing." Like if you watch that full video that I posted on Facebook when Tyreek ran against To. Even then, Chad was guarded. Chad, after what he went through with the reality shit with old girl, you can tell he's guarded about what he's saying and do yeah. because his perception got miscued. But That's true. The one thing that I took from it when um, him and Reggie Bo was like, how New England is just something different. It's just a whole nother beast. And I didn't realize New England really does do that next man up mentality to where – I don't give a fuck if you got 10 rings. This motherfucker done threw 8 million yards, no interceptions, 35 touchdowns, and we kick an ass at will. So I get it. But just to hear it, and, you know, from a player, it's just like, wow. I didn't realize it was like that. But yeah, you know, it, I like it. I'll continue to watch it. I want to say I subscribe to it so I can get the alert when it comes to YouTube. And what's so crazy about it, it's been going almost a year, and I ain't heard nothing about it. I think because they're not on Spotify or anything yeah. is why it hasn't. And did you see the ones with the chef? Yeah. Man, they eat good in the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, they had – the other day I was watching, they had crab legs and macaroni. And, you know, you know they all got something something nice to drink 
throughout the entire show. Oh, yeah. Well, Brandon Marshall came late. They was like, for real, 3.30, boy? Brandon Taylor was like, 3.30, baby, for real? He's like, oh, man, I'm sorry, y'all. He sat there for a second. Well, I got to get a drink. He came back with his big-ass bottle of Jack Daniels. For it, you see another thing? They're all drinking straight. Ain't no yeah. mixing on there. No, no. But yeah. it is it's definitely, people, if y'all can, you know, we try to tell you about different stuff when we see something we like. I Am Athlete is a good podcast. It's on YouTube. It's uh, Brandon Marshall, former NFL wide receiver, uh, played for Denver and Miami. You're probably mainly known for. Uh, he played for and Chicago. Denver, Miami, and Chicago is probably where you'll mainly remember him from. Uh, Channing Crowder played for Miami linebacker. Reggie Wayne played for the Colts. And the OG Fred Taylor played for Jacksonville in New England, and it's just former athletes talking about the game, how it's changed, and just talking about just grown man shit, and just talking about it and how they see stuff, and it's entertaining as hell, and you gonna take something away from it, or you just gonna be outdone and be like, damn, I can't believe that. Because what was it, um, the one with Chad? I'm still debating up in the air on whether or not Chad wants to go to the hall or not. I'm still, I'm still torn on that. I, I don't know he, if it's gay or he, not. He's he just real salty. And that's how I kind of feel because I think – I don't think he liked how Miami played out. And I don't think he liked how New England just basically didn't use him for that whole season. And I think, that's why, I think that's why Channing did what he did when he was talking to him, to get him to lighten up a little bit because – you could tell that it's it's a sore subject. He tried to play it like it wasn't, but you could tell it's a no, sore no, it's, subject. It's like a sore ankle. It, it, stay, it don't ever heal. Yeah, because, yeah, everybody says, yeah, I play for the Super Bowl. But you ain't going to say, I don't want to go to the Hall of Fame. I don't care about it. You care. Who wouldn't care? I, gotta under, it's like I somewhat understand because if I was going to the league, my mindset is, I want to have a Hall of Fame career, but if I don't get into the Hall, as long as I had a good career. I don't want to be a journeyman. I want to have a good career. So it just, it depends. All right, bro. You got anything you want to uh, go out with before we end this one? Uh, Just positive vibes, prayers, send that my way. I thought that was ironic when they said, Brian got a new gig that kind of made me evaluate myself mentally. Just like, I don't know how long he's been waiting or what's been going on, but if it can happen for him, it can happen for me. It just just ain't happening yet, you know? So it's one of the things where in time, in time, everything is fine as wine. So I just got to wait. Yes, sir. And that's not hey. my clothes, although it sounded like it was. It sounded fine. Hey, real that's quick, I got to go. This one was on Facebook. Walter Payton, that great Raider, Bo Jackson. Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders. One got to go. Who you picking? And don't pick the Raider. Say it again. One got to go. Uh, Walter Payton, Bo Jackson, Emmett Smith, Barry Sanders. I'm Which easy. one getting kicked out? That's easy. I got to kick Bo out. You, you, you lying. I kick Bo out because. Mama. Everybody Bo named Mama pick Emmett Smith. How you no. pick Bo Jackson? I, I'm kicking Bo. Because Bo never played a full season. I don't know what Bo can do for 17 games. I know what Emmett can do. Now, a lot was, less than Bo. If it was Walter, Barry, and Emmett, Emmett got to go. Bench and Walter starting Barry. And, yes, I said Bench and Walter. Exactly. Because everybody can be like, I started Walter. I started Sweetness. Sit your Jerry Curl ass down. Okay, it's, it's, it's debatable whether you would start Barry or, or Walter. I get that. So I understand that. But ain't no way in hell I'm cutting Bo Jackson. I got Bo, Tecmo Bo on here, and you think I got, I'm got? i going to keep Emmett Smith? Man, uh, Emmett Smith was made because of that Dallas Cowboy line. You put him anywhere else, he ain't shit. Everybody knows that. I These know what other Emmett three, they either ran around 
or through you. I know what Emmett could do for 17 games. I don't know what Bo can do. Bo could do for 17 games what he did for 12. So it, it don't matter. We don't know that. I can't go off for of, – I'm trying to win put together a winner. I can't go off for of assumption. These other players have video to where I can see what they can do. So, therefore, I got to go what's in front of me, not what I can think about. There's plenty of video. Search YouTube under Bo Jackson. You'll see yeah. all you need to see. It's, yeah, like you said, 12-week video. I see what he can do with a bat. I see what he can do with a football. I don't know what he can do with just the football. There's a reason why he was so cold in Madden. He could do it all. Uh, if he could have, he wouldn't have got hurt. Man, I, I that was low blow. That was low blow. There is no getting through to Kevin on this episode. We're gonna try it again next week. All right, everybody. That's all we got for today. I appreciate once again the members of Black Men Run coming out, talking to us. And uh it's a good show, Kev. Good show. Yes, sir. All right. Hey. As always, everybody, please stay positive, stay blessed. We'll see you, Kevin. End it all. As always, you know, I'm working on the clothing. I, I think I might got one. I'm not sure yet. But, you know, until then, my favorite is holler at your boy. She ain't got to yell. I'll holler at y'all. <laughs>